is and we praise you for your faithfulness, for your loving kindness, for being our God, for being the faithful one that watches over us, for always being there when we call. Each time we call upon you, you always answer us. For this purpose, we say thank you. you. And we count it as a privilege, not a right, to have access even into the throne room of God, where we receive this streamline of freshness every day, every hour. Blessed be your name. As we dive into the ocean of your word, we ask that you teach us again. Help us to come into the same understanding of who you are Amen. in the name of Jesus Christ. Help Amen. us to know you as you know us in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Father. Amen. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 We thank God for the privilege of another day, another week. Another time in his presence. Amen. Amen. This morning, by the grace of God, I want to share with us one of the parables of Jesus Christ. <clears throat> we will read it and then we're going to share what the Holy Spirit has taught me in this regard with you. I titled today's message as The Seed of the Word. The seed of the word. So when we talk about the seed of the word, we talk about planting, all right? If you're a farmer, you will understand this better. If you've read anything about farming, you, you, you don't plant the seed in the air. You plant it in the ground, right? And all the food we eat are planted in the ground. They grow from there. Amen. Amen. Matthew chapter 13, we read from verse 18 to 23. Matthew 13 18 to 23. The Bible says, Therefore, hear the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, then the wicked one comes and snatches away what was sown in his heart. This is he who received seed by the wayside. Verse uh, 20. But let he, sorry, but he who received the seed on stony places, talking about stony ground, this is he who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy, yet he has no root in himself, but endures only for a while. For when tribulation or persecution arises because of the word, Immediately he stumbles. Verse 22 says, Now he who received seed among the thorns is he who hears the word, and he cares, and the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word, and it becomes unfruitful. The verse uh, 20. 23. Mind me, I split my scripture, so don't worry. Mm -hmm. Verse 23 says, But he who receives seed on the good ground is he who hears the word and understands it. Who indeed bears fruit and produces some a hundredfold, some sixty, and some thirty. Amen. 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 May the Lord bless the reading of his words in our hearts. Amen. Amen. Now let's start to see the scripture in the light of a way of understanding it. There are categories of listeners in this group that Jesus, you know, showed us from this scripture. We have about four of them. Yes, about four categories of listeners. Mind you, each person in this group listens. They go to church like you and I do. They pray like you and I do. They hear the preaching like you and I do. But it falls on different ground of their hearts. Now the ground here is the heart, the state of the mind of the people, right? And uh, here we have a category of those that lack understanding. That's category number one. The second category is those that lack the skill for establishment. I needed to write it down. 
First category is those that lack understanding. And second is the category of those that lack the skill for establishment. Because to establish anything, it has there is a skill to establishment. Amen. Uh, the third category of people are those that lack proper focus. Amen. They lack the proper focus, but they pay attention to the cares of this world and the sinfulness of riches. I will emphasize on that later. And the third category are those that understand. So those that lack understanding, those that lack the skill for establishment, those that lack proper focus, and those that have that understanding. Those are the four categories here. Now before I proceed, there's a common word in all of this that talks about, I mean, the word is understanding, all right? It started with those that lack understanding and ended with those that understand. So we're going to journey from the beginning to the end to see. Now what is understanding in itself as, as a word when you say you understand something? It simply means the ability to have insight or good judgment of someone or something. I think I shared something like this recently, you know, about what understanding is. And I think what I was when we were talking about the church, uh, the congregation of the dead, you know, where the Bible says that those that, uh, I think, um, let me look for it, um, yeah, I don't know if I put it down here, but you find it in the scripture where the Bible says that uh, those that sway away from understanding, they live in the congregation of the dead. That's in Proverbs chapter 21, verse 16, by the way. It said, A man who wanders from the way of understanding will rest in the assembly of the dead. So, that, so for, you, for someone to lack understanding is dangerous. Remember, mind you, we're not talking about sins now. We're not talking about fornication, adultery, and all those kind of things. But we're talking about you not, you going to church and you are not understanding what you are hearing is dangerous. So what do you do in such a situation? The Bible speaks in the book of James that is anyone lack, that lack wisdom, let him do what? Let him ask. If you lack understanding, ask. God is able, is, is liberal enough to give you and he will direct you to the right teacher of the word that can make you understand the word of God. So here Jesus was speaking he said in verse 19, when anyone hears the word of the kingdom, mind you, it was emphatic, not just any kind of word. He's talking about the word of the kingdom and does not understand it. The lack of understanding here gives room for the enemy to come. Lack of understanding opens the door for the wicked one to gain access into your life. You wonder why the devil is tormenting you a lot. Wake up church is because you have not given yourself to understanding what the spirit is saying to the churches. He said once one moment. He said once you I found this on the web. Excuse me. Praise God. Hallelujah. All right. I'm back. Once anybody hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, that person opens the door for the enemy. So lack of understanding is dangerous, as I said earlier. The Bible says that then the wicked one comes and snatches it away what was sown in his heart. I mean, that is a serious matter. If you understand the scriptures, you will now see the reason why many people go to church for 10 years, 5 years, 20 years, 30 years, yet they don't understand the word of God. Yet they don't grow. Yet it's because they refuse to understand. And for you to understand, you've got to be 
You have to have the spirit of humility to understand. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You don't act I know when you go to church. Because even the preacher, most of the time, if he's a good preacher, the words that are proceeding from his mouth are bigger than himself. So when you go with an attitude of I know, you will, you have already lost the ground in the spirit, so you're already given the enemy to stay by your side that as much as the word is coming, he's still in it. How much? Mm, thank you, Holy Ghost. This is how devil have the right to accuse us. Because devil does not have the real thing. It is the word, it is what God releases that he comes to steal from God's children. I don't want to dabble into that because there's something coming up in my spirit right now. Because some, most of the gifts that devil says he, he has and he can give, he stole them. He's a thief. Yes. He steals stuff. <coughs> Excuse me. He says, this is who, who receives seed by the wayside. So the state of your heart, once it is like by the wayside, it gives the devil the opportunity because by the wayside means anything goes. This person will give you that, this advice, that person will give you that advice. You are like the dumping ground of all kinds of advices. Your heart is like that ground that everything can just be dropped. It's like a garbage, you know. I mean, we, we all walk on the street sometimes. If you go to an environment that is not very clean, you know. I mean, you... People can just spit on the on, on the ground while they're walking on the on, you know on, on the way. They can they can throw stuff you know plastic bags on the on the on, on the street. They can, I mean, in an environment that is not clean, by the way. That is the state of the heart of many Christians. When they hear the word of the kingdom, they don't understand what is the kingdom. Romans chapter fourteen verse seventeen talks about what the kingdom is. It says, well, the kingdom of God is not eating, is not drinking, but righteousness and peace and joy in what? In the Holy Spirit. That is the kingdom of God. That is the kingdom of God. But now he's talking about the gospel, the word of the kingdom. Matthew 24, 14 says, and this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as the witness to all the nations, and then the end will come. Now, what is the gospel of the kingdom? It's pretty simple. <coughs> the gospel of the kingdom is the message of salvation. It's the message of salvation, proclaiming Christ, who was born, crucified, and resurrected. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For the salvation of man, from sin. This sounds so simple, but it is well, I mean, it is still not understandable by some group of people. Because in their mind, they are thinking God is big and he has a lot of things. God must be so complex. God has made the, he has simplified the complexity. <laughs> Amen. Amen. The moment he gave us Jesus, he simplified everything. That is when he, he, he said, Jesus opened his mouth and say, he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Mm. No one comes to the Father except through me. And that is a fact. Either you believe it or not. As simple as this may sound, it is really, really difficult for some people to comprehend. In the book of Acts chapter 8, verse 12, Acts 8, 12, Philip, the evangelist, you remember him, preached the gospel, the good news of the kingdom. Men and women believed it and they were baptized. So your, your heart has to be worked on. Whereby the way you receive the word of God really matters. It determines if the word will grow 
or not. On the wayside, everybody walk by it. Nothing grows on the wayside. Even if a grass tries to sprout up, by the time two, three, four people, you know, step on it in a day, it will lose its capacity to grow. That's what that stands for. Jesus told us, say, seek first. What? That's the kingdom of God. Mm. And that is the realization of the kingdom of heaven, which should be the principal goal of every Christian. So, may our hearts not be like that of the wayside, in Jesus' name. Amen. <coughs> Verse 20 says, But he who received the seed in stoning, I mean, on stony places. This is he who hears the word and immediately receives with joy. Yet he has no root in himself, but endures only for a while. For when tribulation and persecution arises because of the word, immediately he stumbles. One of the principal uh, core of our Christian life is tribulation. Amen. Amen. Is afflictions, persecutions. And these are inevitable. Either, no matter how spiritual you are, you will go through persecution. No matter how sound you are academically, you will go through tribulation. No matter how unlearned you think you are, you will go through, you know, persecutions or afflictions. So, it's part of the package. But hear this. The word itself, the gospel of the kingdom, is an attractor of tribulations and persecutions. It attracts tribulations and persecutions. The, this gospel we are preaching attracts. It, it's like once it is preached, enemy has a leeway to just attack. Because the Bible speaks here, it said, tribulations or persecutions arises because of the word. For the sake of the gospel of, 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 of the kingdom, persecution arises. I was asking a group of people recently, I said, who persecuted Jesus Christ? Who are the people that killed Jesus? And I was explaining to them, it will take somebody who knows the things of the kingdom to actually go against the kingdom. I think it was John that was saying this. <laughs> May the Lord give us understanding. Amen. When he was talking about the Antichrist, he said, they went out of us. Don't expect Antichrist to come from somewhere. An Antichrist, someone that knows the Bible, that I mean, that explains it. Fundamental. An antichrist is somebody that knows Christ, but standing against him. Let me leave that at that. The word that we hear attracts tribulations and they attract trials. That's why anywhere you see the word of God growing, there is much more attack from the kingdom of darkness. But Jesus said that we should be cheerful for he has what? Overcome the world. Amen. 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 So since he has, since he overcame, we are going to overcome too. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you are a good Bible student, you will understand that devil does not leave people alone. He only invents <laughs> different strategies of capturing their hearts. Devil is like a chameleon. If you live in an advanced world, he will deal with you in an advanced way. <laughs> if you live in an underprivileged environment, he will deal with you in an underprivileged way. If, it's, if it is the law you want to use, he will penetrate into the law of your land and use it against you. That is the devil for you. So, 
for the word's sake. Now, this group of people, listen to this. These ones, they hear the word, and the word was germinating, it was growing. It, because the word of God was doing something in their lives. So they were joyful. The word was doing great things in their lives. They were joyful. They can see difference. They can see that, hey, indeed, because the Bible says that the, uh, the kingdom of God is, is, is uh, uh, what is it called? Joy in the Holy Ghost. Amen. So they, they have that joy. But because they, they lack what it takes to be established. Persecution, tribulations. When it begins to hit them, what happened? The Bible says immediately such group of people stumbles. May we not stumble in Jesus' name. Amen. Verse 22 speaks about it says, now he who receives seed among the thorns. <coughs> when I, each time I read this word and I hear the thorns, I remember what Jesus, I mean, not Jesus, what God said. How many of you know that the ground was caused because of man? Do you remember that? I'm, I'm writing a small book that will be out pretty soon. And as the Holy Spirit was sharing these things with me, I'm like, this is too heavy for me. Do you remember the scripture where the Bible says that and the creation waits for the manifestations of the sons of God? Do you ever ask why? Why is the creation waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God? And the sons of God now came up and said that they are also groaning for the adoption of their body. If one is not done, the other cannot be done. I don't want to preach that right now. But the word thorns here just because the, it's a curse for the ground to breed those thorns and thistles for man. And the ground is crying because of that. Because that is not the nature of the ground. It's a curse. May the Lord give us understanding. Amen. The nature of the ground is to yield good fruit for the sons of God. But by reason of the curse, the, the, the ground cannot yield good fruits. They are yielding thorns and thistles. So they are waiting for the manifestations of, of the sons of God so that they can be free from that curse. Some of us don't understand that this world itself is running on a on a, on a is, is, is running on a cursed level. Anything you see that is called good right now is a product product of a curse. The only group of people that live in the in the in the the, the live stream of the throne of God which the Bible called the refreshing time, are the sons of God. Believers. Let's leave that aside. Let's continue. Now, he who receives seed among the thorns, I will teach on it later on, but not today, is he who hears the word, and the cares of this world, and the deceitfulness of riches, choke the word, and he becomes unfruitful. Now, this group of people, they hear the word. I don't know if you have ever been to, uh, I know most people grew up in the city, you know, I have the experience of going to a rural area, you know, in my life experience, I've seen thorns in real life. So some have never seen it, okay? But I've seen thorns, I've seen thistles growing on the, on the way to the farm, on the way, I mean, you see, it's, I have seen it live, so I know what it is. In the same place that thorn is growing, is the same ground that is producing good herbs. Are you with me? Good fruits. So the work of the farmer is to go regularly to scrape away the thorns. Amen? Amen. To scrape away the thistles so that good seed can grow properly. But here, the heart, the state of the heart of this person, of this group of people, they receive the word of God. 
And the word of God was growing. It was growing. They were enjoying the kingdom. The word was growing in them. But, all of a sudden, thorns sprout out. And, let me tell you, it's just like it is in the physical. Bad stuff grows faster than good stuff. So the moment, you know, the thorns grew, they grow faster and they begin to choke the good stuff that is in the heart of that person. And what are these things that represent thorns in our lives? Cares of this world and deceitfulness of riches. And I'm going to spend quality time on that this morning. Cares of this world. Cares of this world. Cares of this world. Cares of this world. Now listen to me, people of God. You cannot be in to God. You cannot know God so much and care so much about this world or the things that are in there. Because the Holy Spirit would have made you to understand and see the end of all things. You see, our people, sometimes believers, values their job more than God because they have to pay bills. Cares of this world. Hello, church. Hello. Some values their wife more than God. Cares of this world. Some value their children more than God. Cares of this world. Some value their husbands more than God. Cares of this world. Some value they cherish and care about their new car they just brought. They just bought. The way they, they care about it, clean it up, you know, make it shine. And if anybody comes near it, it's like, why are you touching my gold? Cares of this world. Now, the question is, is it wrong to care? No, it is not wrong. I'll give you an example of two ladies who are sisters in the Bible. Mary and Martha. These two ladies love to take care of Jesus Christ. Anytime he's around, they love to cook for him. You know, he's like loving to take care of the man of God. Amen. Amen. And Jesus always loved their company too, mm. with the disciples. Amen. Amen. On this faithful day, Jesus was teaching. And uh, Martha, as usual, was running up and down elder scatter to make sure that he prepares food for Jesus and his disciples so that they will not go hungry. Is that wrong? No. If I is a good thing to do, if I have the physical privilege too, I will do the same. But listen, on this occasion, Mary did not assist Martha. Mary sat, because Jesus was teaching the issues of the kingdom, Mary sat at the feet like every other person listening to the word. But Martha was grossly engaged in the care ministry as it is. Now, the next thing was, Martha was like, Jesus, can't you understand that this, this is becoming burdensome for me? Can't you talk to my sister to help me as usual so that we can take care of this man of God? And Jesus looked at her and said, Mary, Mary, I'm sorry, Martha, Martha, you care too much. You have neglected the real thing that you're supposed to do. And Jesus said that Mary has chosen the right path. Which is listening, hearing, developing in the word of God. Now, some of you can say, no, uh, Martha has a, is a special ministry. No, listen to this. Jesus did not condemn Martha. But he illustrated to her that, look, what you are 
are doing right now could have been done even after we are done preaching. Could have been done after we are done teaching. Could have been done after we are done with, you know, praying. Why do you, 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 you carry so much? Calm down, girl. The cares of this world. Now, what are the cares of this world? What are we wearing? That's a dimension of it. This is another dimension I want to talk about. What are we wearing? What are we eating? Jesus said that, do not bother yourself about that. Do not worry. For your father who, who created you knows that you need, you are in need of those things. And he will supply. Amen? Mm -hmm. Some can go all the way for... Recently I was thinking, and I asked myself, how many hours do I spend at work? And how many hours do I spend before God in a day? Some of us will say, after all, it is God that gives us work to do. I agree, yes. But that's your lunch time. What do you spend it on? Maybe your lunch time is 30 minutes. Do you spend the whole 30 minutes eating? I have never seen anybody that spent 30 minutes eating. How much food do you want to eat? That 30 minutes constantly, you are not talking, you are not watching TV, you are not doing anything. You are just munching the dinner. You keep eating for 30 whole minutes. It's not possible. But here is the deal, people of God. The cares of what to eat, the cares about what to wear, the cares about the house to ride, uh, to, to, to buy, or the cares of the cars to ride, or the cares of where to travel to, the cares of how I want to be popular or I, how I don't want to be popular, the cares about, ah, I think I've been around for a while, I need to be known. You don't need to be known. Don't go the way of the celebrities. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Many people care so much about their skin than the way they care about the word of God. Many people care about how elegant they need to look like than the way they care about the word of God. We always say, there is no time, there is no time. Yet yeah, there is time for you to do that which you are doing for yourself. But there is no time for God. When it is time to pray, that is when you remember you are tired and you want to go to work the following morning. When it is time to do anything spiritual, pray, study the word, or you know, or read the Bible, or listen to, to a message, or you know, or, or, or listen to good music that is that is going to lift your spirit, that is when you remember, I think I, I, I'm working tomorrow. Let me quickly go and bathe and sleep. Check yourself out, people of God. In the last seven days, how many hours did you spend before God? While you're at work, are you still in the spirit? Because you can be at work and be in the spirit. Recently, you know, I, I take my, my, my little son to school every day, and every day we pray in the car. And my son told me one day, he said, Daddy, I don't even know the difference when we're in church and when we're not in church right now. <laughs> I said, why? He said, because we're always praying. I said, yes, because every day is church, boy. We pray every day. Because what guides our steps in this world today, in this hostile environment, this, this world is hostile. I don't care how, how good looking you think you are, how much money you have in your bank account. That this world is hostile. Mm -hmm. Ask those that are working and making money how much effort they have to put in to make that little money they have. It's hard earned money. Cares of this world. You want to do this, you want to do that, you want to do this. You look at your 24 hours. And you barely can remember if you spent four minutes for God in your 24 hours. And this goes hands in glove with deceitfulness of riches. You remember Abraham a lot? Yes. You remember him? Them? In Genesis chapter 13. Just write it down. 
there was a clash between their heads, man. And Abraham told Lot, don't let them, let them be, don't, don't let there be clashes between us. You choose your path, I choose my path. Whatever, whatever path you choose is, is yours. And whatever path I choose is mine. And the next thing is, was that <coughs> in verse 10, the Bible says, And Lot lifted his eyes and saw all the plain of Jordan, that it was well watered everywhere. <laughs> he didn't, what he doesn't see, or sorry, what he did not see was that that same land is going to be the land that will destroy him and his whole family. But what he saw was well watered everywhere, beautiful. The Bible even says that it was like the garden of the Lord, like the land of Egypt as you go towards Zohar. Now, verse 11 says, Then Lord chose for himself all the plain of Jordan, and Lord Jordan is, and they separated from each other. Amen. Amen. In verse 12, Abraham dwelt in the land of Canaan, and Lord dwelt in the cities of the plain and pitched his tent even as far as Sodom. Lord saw what could be like riches, but it's a deceitful one. It is that one that destroyed his life. Even though the Bible called him a righteous man in the midst of that situation. Don't let the cares of this world, don't let this, I mean, there are a lot of things that attract us on this planet, us, but they are not worth buying into. They are not. What he doesn't see was verse 13. So, but the men of Sodom were exceedingly wicked and sinful against the, the Lord. The sinfulness of riches. He saw green grass. He saw beautiful environment that he can actually pitch in and make more money and enjoy more life. But what he couldn't see was that the people in that territory, they are what? Exceedingly wicked and sinful against God. I don't want to choose that path. That is deceitfulness of riches. Let's see true riches from verse 14 of the same Genesis chapter 13. The Bible was speaking and said, And the Lord said to Abraham, After the Lord had separated from him, Lift your eyes now. <laughs> there are some things that needed to be separated from you before you can see properly. Lot was Abraham's nephew. That's family. Family tie. Some of us need to cut away from some family ties that is stopping us from seeing what God wants us to see. Lift up your eyes now and look from the place where you are. Northward, southward, eastward, and westward. For all the land which you see I give to you and your descendants forever. Hello, church. I think uh, Lord chose the, the best part, isn't it? <laughs> Northward, southward, eastward, westward. So including where Lord chose. <laughs> oh my God. This is true riches. It is what God gives you that lasts. What God bless you with, that is the true riches. Not what you covet. Covetousness led Lot into the, into the door of the enemy called Sodom. Go and read about Lot in Sodom. When God sent, you know, angels there. Even though he was, he, he didn't want to, to, to be part of it. He had two daughters. This man had two daughters that were virgins. In Sodom. Ah. Where Sodomites exist. He's a good guy at that point. But unfortunately, he fell for the, for the trick of the enemy. That, he was deceived into that. Even when he, 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 he ended up protecting the angels of God that were with him. Amen? Amen. He was ready to sacrifice his daughters even in the process. He told the men that were 
eyeing those other men. So what is happening about the gays, lesbians, and all this stuff is not new. They are called sodomites. So, Lord said, okay, you don't touch this man. Let me give you my daughters. So that you can sleep with them. They said, no, we don't want that kind of affair. We want man to man. It was a talk of war. And the angels of God that was in Lord's house have to blindfold those people and they couldn't get the way to enter. And they have to pull Lot in. Unfortunately, God rained, Brian, uh, rained the sulfur upon them. So check out the land you are living in. Raise the standard. Don't be deceived by the riches in that environment. So, in verse 15, for all the land which you see, I give to you and your descendants forever, and I will make your descendants of the dust of the earth, so that if a man could number the dust of the earth, then your descendants could also could be numbered. Now, God has to wait for Abraham to make the decision of separating himself from Lot. Alright? There are a lot of things that God has to wait for. Some of us don't know that we are the one actually delay God's release upon our lives. God did not ask him to take lots with him. But he took him. Isn't it? Alright? And while they were going, God did not say, don't take him along. But actually it was an extra luggage. We saw it later now. You will see the same thing in the life of Jacob and Esau. When Jacob was coming from Laban, you know, with his two wives now, you know, with all the sons that have been born to him, approaching Esau, you see that he, he sent gifts to him. And Esau said, no, 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 I don't need your gift. Esau had 400 men that were with him, minimum of, I mean, the group that were going, that went out with him to welcome Jacob, there were 400 men. Now listen. These men worked for Esau. Listen carefully, people of God. Esau was not the blessed one. Jacob is. <coughs> Don't use your situation to judge what God is doing. Because you might be judging it wrongly. The guy who is blessed is suffering at Laban's territory. The unblessed guy is making money. The guy that doesn't have the blessings of God as it were has not less than 400 men with him. That if he wants to move, they move with him. It's like you have a business and you have 400 people you are paying their salaries every month. You are a rich man. Or you're a rich woman. Even if you have a congregation of 400 people, our God is helping you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I mean, Esau said, I don't need your gift because I have all that I needed. But it was not in the plan of God, yet he was making money. Deceitfulness of riches. So, Uncle Jacob, who is actually the one with the promise, who is actually the one who the blessings have rested upon, have to go through troubles, struggles. And if you are to judge that situation in the physical, you will say, indeed, God has forsaken Jacob. But whose children became pillars in the kingdom of God at the end of the day? Hallelujah. Amen. Sons of Jacob. Sons of Jacob, they became established in the things of God, and God has to, they, are, they, they became the generation that God poured Himself into. And that is the line that Jesus came through. Don't be deceived by what people have. Money is not a proof of God's blessing. But when you say God blesses you, 
He will give you money to do stuff. Amen. Cars, buildings, businesses, conglomerate that you build, they are not the proof of God being in your life. Because it could be categorized as the deceitfulness of riches. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. These are hard sayings, by the way. It will take a matured spirit to take this pill in. Now, verse 23 says, that's there, uh, we're still in the book of, um, let's go back to um, Matthew, is it? Matthew chapter 13. Now, I think I omitted something here. Let me, let me quickly go back to it. In verse 22, the Bible says that the case of this world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the world and becomes what? Unfruitful. Do you see that in your Bible? Yes. And becomes what? Unfruitful. Unfruitful. Now, there are believers that are expected to be fruitful because if the seed take roots in your heart and you grow by it, you'll be fruitful, you'll be productive. But this cares of this world, the deceitfulness of riches, makes a lot of people to be unfruitful. They are still believers. They still go to church. In fact, they are regarded as good people. Amen. But they are unfruitful. Oh my God. I don't want to be in that level. Look at Mark chapter 11. Mark chapter 11 verse 12 says, I'll read verses 12 to 14, then I'll read 20 to 22. Now the next day when they had come out from Bethany, he was hungry. Who was hungry? Jesus. So Jesus got hungry like you and I do. And verse 13, And if from afar a fig tree having leaves, he went to see if perhaps he would find something on it. When he came to it, oh my God, he found nothing but leaves. But it was not the season for figs. In response, Jesus said to it, Let no one eat fruit from you ever again. And his disciples heard it. Okay. <laughs> it was not the season for figs to bear fruit. So listen carefully. So naturally, that fig tree was doing the right thing. Looks good. There are things that are looks good, but they don't have life. The tree of knowing good and knowledge is different from the tree of life. It looks good. It looks like you have knowledge. But it does not have life. This tree, remember, I think I've taught you this a couple of times. You know, when you see trees in the Bible, it's a representation of man, of human beings. Amen. Jesus was healing somebody and the guy, I mean, who was blind, and the, the guy said, hey, I can see, after Jesus asked him, he said, I can see men walking as trees. All right? So this tree is a people, is somebody a believer who have leaves, who has the physical, you know, ecstasy, the 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 facade, of, of the outward facade of what a Christian should look like, but does not bear fruits that the master of it can eat from. Hallelujah. So, Jesus caused the tree. That means, let me show you another scripture. Jesus said, those that are lukewarm, what will he do to them? He will spit them out. Before anything is spilled out, it, you, take, you took it in first, isn't it? That means at some point in time, this group of believers were giving God pleasure. But they got to a, a stage whereby cares of this world and deceitfulness of riches begin to choke the word in them. So it become, they become unfruitful. And once you become unfruitful, it's going to spit you out. He said, the lukewarmness, you are either hot or cold. 
Don't be passive about the kingdom of God. Don't try to sit on the fence because you cannot sit on the fence in this matter. You are either on this side or on the other side. And there is danger for being lukewarm. Lukewarm can be, you know, aligned with this fruit, this tree that has the leaves but cannot bear fruit. Jesus caused it. Said from this moment on, no one eats from you. In verse 20, let's go there. Verse 20, now in the morning as they passed by, they saw the fig tree dried up from its roots. And Peter remembering said to him, Rabbi, look, the fig tree which you caused has withered away. Now this tree was just occupying space, taking resources, coming to church, learning all the word of God that is being taught to you. You are enjoying the grace of God. You are enjoying the anointing of God. But you are not productive with it. This is the kind of believer the Bible is talking about. As Jesus is, he will bring teachings out of every situation. In verse 22, Jesus taught him faith. <laughs> he said, so Jesus answered and said to them, have faith in God. Yes, that happened. It's a bad experience to that kind of tree. But you need, you know what? Have faith in God. Whatever you say, you will have it. Whatever you say. So Jesus was teaching Peter in this regard that look, it's not just I, Jesus, that can do that. You too can say it and have it and you have the same result. May the Lord help us Amen. Amen. and have mercy on us in Jesus' name. Amen. So that we don't become unfruitful. Because that's what cares of this world and the sinfulness of riches does to believers. I have seen believers that are very laborious for the kingdom of God. But the moment there is need to start working for money, and I mean working for money, they swear away from what they were taught, from what they have taught, from what they believed in. I've seen pastors who've been in ministry doing great. Something happened after and they couldn't pastor anymore. All you now see about them is that my question was, well, was such a person called to start with at, at all? Because if you are called, that calling will be calling you. It will be driving you towards your destiny in life. The sinfulness of riches that chokes people. We choke the word and reduce it. And that is wasting resources. May the Lord have mercy on us. As I come to a close, verse 23 says, But he who received seed on the good ground is he who hears the word and understands it. Now, this is a good place to, to, to really relax and listen. He who what? Receive the seed on the what? On the good ground. That is the state of this heart. The state of the heart of this person is good. Amen. Amen. It doesn't breed th thorns. Amen. And this is this person is a, is a good believer. He does not allow the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches to, to, to choke the word in him. This person understands. Mm -hmm. This person can judge God faithful like Sarah did. You know, Sarah back in Genesis did not believe God. He, she laughed. You remember? Yes. In the book of Hebrews, we find out that the Bible says that and Sarah judged God faithful. And at first, he did not, I mean, she didn't really understand what God was doing. But by reason of staying put and, you know, walking with God, she came to the understanding. So, this group of believers understood the word. They have what it takes to be established. And they, 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 they don't allow the cares of this world to, to steal anything that God has sent into their hearts. But listen. There is a turn to this also. Hey, on the good ground is he who hears the word and understands it. 
who indeed bears fruit, amen, amen. and produces. This category of people bears fruit and do what? And they produce. So they are not just anyhow. They hear it and they produce result. Mm. And when they produce result, the result they produce comes at different levels. Mm. Some, sometimes they produce 30 fold, sometimes they produce 60 fold, sometimes they pro produce 100 fold. These are categories of believers like the fig tree that brings forth its fruits, both in season and out of season. They know how to produce fruit regardless of the season that is proclaimed upon them. Either it is season or not, they are always giving God the fruits that he needs. So God, anytime God comes to them, God is always having something to feed on from them. The good ground heart bears fruit at different levels. It's a good heart. It's a good field. And this good field has to be guided. Mm. What did I say? Guided. It has to be guided. Matthew 13. This is where <coughs> Is it? Am I correct? Is it Matthew 13? Yeah, wait, wait. Matthew 13. I don't think it's Matthew 13. Uh, I don't think I put that right, but let me quickly check it. It's where the Bible was taking about. Um, it's another parable, you know, where the Bible talks about why men slept. Let me quickly get it right. It's 25. It's chapter 25. Fast 25. 13 25. Thank you. Um, yes. Okay, still Matthew 13, isn't it? Yes, okay, verse 24 says, Another parable he put forth to them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed good seed in his field. So this field is the good ground. Are you with me? Yes. And this good ground has the receptive measure to receive every word sown and can produce with it. Amen? Amen. He said, but this man, so seed in his field. Verse 25 says, but while men slept, that is why your good ground has to be guided. Sometimes I don't know how to overflow this, this issue of being careful on who speaks into your life. I'm a very careful person when I sense something negative about people or about the state of their heart I know how to excuse myself. A lot. It does not matter who you are. You can be a family member, I will excuse myself from you. Some will say, oh no, they don't do that. They do that in the kingdom. Because this journey is too crucial for me, for anybody. Look at the life of Abraham. The blessing God promised him could not come until he has to separate from Lot. But why men slept? The sleeping here is not about PM. It's about not taking cognizance of what God is doing as per time in your life, in your environment, in your situation. You'll be regarded as a sleeping Christian or a sleeping giant. Why men slept? His enemy came and so thirst among the wheat and went his way. Now listen, that it is a good ground does not mean that the enemy does not have access to it. You got to stay in position. You got to stay awake because the Bible says that the heart of man is the out of out of the heart comes issues of life, isn't it? He says, it says, guide your heart with all diligence. Guide your heart with all. You listen to all kinds of music. You listen to, you watch all kinds of movies that are not blessing your life. You listen to all kinds of people suggesting this for you, suggesting that for you. They will be the one to tell you how to control your wife. They will be the one to tell you how your wife to control you. They will be the one to, to they say all kinds of, and you listen to them. Yeah, yeah. 
The enemy will come and will sow tears on it. It will be dangerous. And you know a funny thing? If you've ever seen tears before, it looks like good fruit. It looks like good stuff. Have you ever seen tears before? You can Google it after this meeting and look at it. In fact, it looks like wheat. How wheat grows is the same way tears grow. So if you go to the farm, you will see the two of them growing together and you won't know the difference. The Bible says that the multitude of counsel, there's what? There's safety. It is in the multitude of good counsels. Mm -hmm. Don't take that scripture and start asking people all kinds of questions. I say, I tell me, my husband is doing this, my wife is doing this, my children are this, and they, they are just, they will be bombarding you with junks. And the Bible tells us that the Holy Spirit is our counselor. Nobody. Simple. We can quickly ask people about anything but God. The last person we ask for opinion he is the person of Jesus Christ. Which is wrong. Why? Men slept. Like Wheat and tears, they grow the same. They look alike. So, verse 26 says, But when the grain had sprouted and produced a crop, then the tears also appeared. Do you see that? So the servant of the owner came and said to him, Sir, did you not sow good seed in your field? How then does it have tears? He said to them, An enemy has done this. Mm. An enemy has done this. Most of the troubles that most families are going through is the work of somebody that appears as a friend or as a sister or as a brother, but they are being used as an enemy against your home. An enemy has done this. The servant said to him, Do you want us then to go and gather them up? Now this is where it is so dangerous. Verse 29 says, But they said, No! Lest while you gather up the tears, you also uproot the wheat with them. In this case, on this good ground that produces 64, 100, 30 fold, you still have to guide it with jealousy. Guide it jealously. Because there is a probability of the enemy sowing something that looks Good. Like I said earlier, it looks good. It looks like a knowledge, but it is. it does not have the life of God. So it's not something you can do yourself anymore. Verse 30 says, let both grow together until the harvest. And at the time of harvest, I will say to the reapers. So it's not the servants now, but the reapers. Talking about the angels of God. First gather together the tears and bind them in bundles to burn them. But gather the wheat into my barn. Mm -hmm. That your heart is a good ground producing result does not mean you does not mean you are done. You have a lot of work to do by guiding it what? Jealously. Guide your heart jealously. And the Lord will give you peace. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. Let us pray. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word that is yea and amen. We thank you for your loving kindness. Thank you for your word. Father, we pray. Because this is, most of the time, is beyond what we can do as humans. We know how to do our part. But we need you to help us. So that we will be the good ground that will keep producing good fruits for you. Anytime you come to us, you will find something to feed on from us. Anytime, any day, anywhere we are, at work, at school, at home, in church, out of church, everywhere, in marketplace, with friends, with family members, you will always find something awesome to eat from us in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We pray according to the book of Hebrews that the Lord is interested in eating the fruits of our lips. Father Lord, you will find something to feed from us in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Amen. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Hallelujah.